Welcome back, everyone, to another Friday night edition of Hometown Highlights. Maya, I think, is still celebrating the Lions' victory last night, so we're without her this evening, but we still got a good batch of Hometown Highlights to get. We're start with the battle for Benzie County, a mashup that we haven't seen since 2019, but Frankfurt and Benzie Central are back on each other's schedules and each other's good sides. Created a great atmosphere for both of these teams, fielding playoff caliber talent, and we get... For the third week in a row, a great game as our game of the week for Hometown Highlights. Huskies hosting this one. They lead the all-time series 13-10. Dan Wallington, yeah, Jackson Childers, great pass to him. Childers makes it even better by coming right to it and then evading the defenders as he gets into the end zone. Band is loving that 6-0 lead. And then Childers on a pitch. He looks like he's tackled early, but nope. The refs are giving him the upright touchdown signal. Benzi. Up 14 nothing. Frankfurt, that was a fourth down play. They needed a momentum builder, and they got it with that play. Chill, uh, is an opportunity there for Ethan Cur or Carter Kirby, excuse me, to Eli Latart, and then Kirby to Tristan Griffin. That would put Frankfurt on the board, 14-7. These two would be tied at 20 through most of the second half, but Frankfurt gets the road win in the end, 27-20. Wow, great game there. Boyne City and Charlevoix meeting up in their annual rivalry game in Charlevoix County with the winner taking the lead in the NMFC Leaders Division. Jake Neer doing some damage, evading the Charlevoix defenders. He even won up to a teammate right down there in the red zone. A good spot for a road team to be. Joey McHugh going to get the handoff, finishing off that short score for Boyne as they get a touchdown on the board in this one. The Raiders, though, on a fake, Owen Waha is going to keep it, and instead of passing, he's going to march it on down the field. A great return there on a, a fourth down potential pump play, and then Camden Carey bringing down near there. Charlevoix getting the win back. They lost at Boyne a year ago. This year, it's about Charlevoix getting the win 26 to 13. All right, in our third signature game of the week, it's Cadillac hosting Sault Ste. Marie. These two reuniting in the Big North Conference for the season. Blue Devils yet to allow a point this year. Callan Campbell's pass completed to Camden Labatty, but he's going to fall to the turf, and in the process, yep, that ball is going to come out. Cadillac spots it immediately and jumps on it. It's Caden Westdorp recovering it. Back to work, though, for the Blue Devils. Labatty kick is returned to Connor Gurdon, who's going to try and trickle around everybody to get a decent return for the Vikings on their home field. The Sioux with another opportunity on offense, but they cough it up again here. Recovered by Evan Hughes of the Vikings. Defensive-minded contest early, 0-0 at the half. Sault Ste. Marie gives up two touchdowns, though. Their first two of the season. Cadillac wins it at home, 14-7. Some more scores from tonight. Going to check in on that score. Petoskey putting up 50 in a shutout over Escanaba in another great Lower Peninsula, Upper Peninsula battle as the Northmen get a 50-0 win at home. T.C. West gets the first win of the season. The Titans knocking off Bay City Western on the road in a low-scoring tight one, 8-7. And in the Highland Conference, you got to beat Beale City to prove you're going to take the lead in that conference. McBain wanted to do that tonight, but the Aggies dominated in that one, 48-7 on the road over the Ramblers in that Highland Conference football matchup. All right, still more hometown highlights to come on the night. Elk Rapids and Grayling, that was a doozy. East Jordan putting on a show. That and much more straight ahead. Stay with us, hometown highlights. We'll be right back. For the East Jordan Red Devils coming off to six win seasons and their first playoff victory in program history a year ago. Red Devils, they're 2-0 this year, averaging almost 50 points a game. They're at home tonight, taking on Kalkaska. We start in the second half. EJ lobbing one up. William Webb connecting with Ryder Malpass, pulling that touchdown in, extending that East Jordan lead at home. Fourth down, Kalkaska. They're going to go for it. You thought they might have punted, but hey, why not see what the offense can do? Tommy Olds gets to Evan Hardy. And the Blazers are on the board. Webb, nice pitch here. Freddie Thompson does the rest. Going to the far left of the end zone. And, hey, I think the refs called that a touchdown. But we got another one coming from the Blazers on their side of things because Ethan Schaub is going to get to the end zone on this possession for Kalkaska. But it is EJ that gets that big win. They're 3-0. 
And they're looking tough to beat. 43-12. to 12. They're going to be up with Charlotte, I believe, next week. Just in Charlotte. That should be a good one. Two old Lake Michigan conference rivals meeting up, making that girl pretty happy. First time since 2017, Elk Rapids hosting Grayling Ethan Kuharik. Through the skies. It's picked off, though, by Keegan Koderman in the end zone. Elk's making sure no damage can be done. Kuharik, though, changes things up. Gets to Fletcher Quinn. Ooh, pulling that away from a defender there. These guys are gunning for it. Putting their bodies on the line. He gets up some Kuharik again. This one to Zach Bold, who comes down with it for Elk Rapids. Another big interception, making the cheerleaders happy. Because then the Elks can go on offense. But Chase DeArmond going to throw this one way up top. Colden Allen comes down with it for Grayling. So a lot of turnovers here. You know, that just means these guys are playing very aggressive, really wanting that win. Vikings would get the win with the feet of Jake Huspin here, punching that score in. Grayling takes it 38 to 14. Travis City Central hosting downstate Power Davison, last year's second off Valley South Division champion. The Trojans, of course, in the North Division. Trojans down in the second half. Peyton Waller wraps up a running back for the Cardinals there. And Braden McCoon gonna get in, get his hands up there to block that pass attempt to keep Davison on their side of the field, but it was only a matter of time the way they were playing this game. Hopefully they ignored that ice cream truck. Dominic Perez punching in another score for them here as Davison wins in shutout fashion over the Trojans at Thurlby Field. That now gives TC Central a one to two start on the season. Some other scores from a busy Friday night. We go to the eight player scoreboard right now. It was Inland Lakes putting up 44 in a good back and forth matchup in the Ski Valley Conference. The Bulldogs defeating Central Lake 44 to 30. Marion, they've had some great teams the past few years and they proved it again because that Mesic team can be competitive and the Eagles shut them out in this meeting. And St. Ignis, first year in eight player football and I believe they're off to a three and zero start. Catapulting on that with a 42 to 24 win over Lincoln Alcona on the schedules tonight as the Saints looking very comfortable in that shift from 11 player to eight player football. So there you go, some highlights and some scores from week three of the high school football action. Of course, we know we got six more weeks to go before we even get to the playoffs. So a lot of meat and potatoes coming up.